All right, hello everyone, and welcome to another session. We're looking at the mechanisms of evolution today. So in class, we've discussed what a species actually entails, um, and we came up with our own definition, and the accurate definition of what a species is, is a group of organisms that are able to breed to give viable offspring. Now, what does this mean? We know that this means that the offspring can survive, and they can also reproduce themselves. So, for example, um, a mule, which is when a horse and a donkey breeds, is not another species because it cannot reproduce itself. Okay, so in order for a species to exist um, and be able to breed and give viable offspring, it needs to have um, no geographic barriers. It needs its chromosomes to be able to align in mitosis. Um, a genitalia needs to be compatible, obviously, to be able to reproduce and needs to demonstrate appropriate behavior. Okay, so the modern theory of evolution has two main concepts which are at the core of it. And the first one is that characteristics of living things change with time. Uh, the second one is that these changes can be acted upon by natural selection. And you would probably know that natural selection and evolution go hand in hand. It's a very important process that drives evolution. Now, what I want you to start thinking about is um, what do you need for evolution to occur? So, for example, um, characteristics of living things change with time, but what factors or processes need to occur to cause uh, changes in these organisms? Okay, so... Sources of variation. So this is kind of what I was touching on just before in terms of you need changes to occur in organisms which can then be acted upon by natural selection. So for evolution to occur, you need variation. There's a few ways this happens. Mutations is a big one, and that's a process that we need for evolution. So mutations um, produce new alleles. We know this. Mutations can be positive, negative, or neutral. In this case, as you would know, we're looking at positive mutations, so mutations which will actually create a, an advantage uh, for the organism to survive in its environment. Another way of creating uh, variation, as you know, is also sexual recombination, which happens during meiosis. Remember back to genetics. Okay, so there's actually four main evolutionary processes, or... Uh, that drive evolution and you need for evolution to occur. So they're mechanisms of evolution. A really big one that you would all be familiar with is natural selection and that's what we'll look at now. So we remember back from last year that both the genotype and the expression of this as the phenotype or phenotype of a population can change. What we usually, and that's important for natural selection to occur, we need to understand that concept. Now, we usually associate natural selection as survival of the fittest, and this is the most basic way we can think of natural selection, which is true. However, we're going to dig a bit deeper than that. So something that is at the very, very core of natural selection is differential reproduction of genotypes and therefore phenotypes. Okay, I'll explain a little bit what this means later. Well, essentially what this means is the fittest creatures are more likely to survive and pass their genes to their offspring, producing a population that is better adapted, and the less fit individuals are less likely to be passed on to the next. Um, so the genes of the less fit individuals are less likely to be passed on to the next generation. So when I'm saying fit, I definitely don't mean fitness in terms of physical... Um, like if I was running that kind of fitness, no. And I'm sure you've gathered that, but I'm just going to point it out. Uh, fitness means environmental fitness. So it means whatever that organism needs to survive in its environment. So if it's very fit, it is very well adapted to survive in that environment. Um, the really important thing to remember is that the selective force in natural selection is the environment. Okay, so... That's the driving force behind natural selection. Now, something I want you to note, so have a look at this picture up the top. I just want to point out that differential reproduction just means that one particular genotype is being passed on more often and more of the offspring of that genotype are surviving 
than another genotype which has lower fitness okay so it doesn't mean that the um, lower fitness genotype isn't being passed on at all it just means that there's less um, breeding occurring and or less surviving so usually a bit of both okay and you can see that in that picture okay so as I was saying when I'm talking about fitness I'm talking about environmental fitness and it can be expressed in a lot of ways there's not just one way that you can be environmentally fit essentially as I said it just means being very well adapted to survive in your environment so for example it may mean that the organism is very able to avoid predators that will make it environmentally fit it may imply greater resistance to disease uh, it may enhance ability to obtain food it may mean resistance to drought um, it might mean enhanced reproductive ability such as attracting a mate um, and as you can see these are all factors that would influence whether an organism will survive in its environment or um, is more likely to survive so better adapted individuals produce relatively more offspring and then pass on these genes more successfully than the less adapted or less fit individuals you'll all remember this peppered moth example uh, what happened was these light moths were very common prior to the industrial revolution um, over in the UK when this occurred there was a lot of soot on the trees which caused the uh, dark form of the peppered moth to become more common because it was not being eaten by predators so it was more it had a high fitness in that type of environment than the light form of the um, peppered moth and hence evolution evolution occurred all right perfect thank you